Hi, I'm Greg Hunter. This is the weekly news wrap-up for Friday, October 25th, 2013. My top story this week, the imploding relationship between Saudi Arabia and America. Now, one Saudi official went so far as to say he was calling for a major shift in U.S.-Saudi relations. Why? Because the Saudis are outraged over how the U.S. has handled the Syrian crisis. It's a bloody civil war that's gone on for more than two years, and it's claimed the lives of more than 100,000 Syrians. Another thing the kingdom is upset about is the increasingly cozy relationship between the U.S. and Iran. Iran is the Saudis' nemesis. Another Saudi official said that the U.S. was blatantly perfidious over how it handled the Syrian situation. What does that mean, blatantly perfidious? Blatantly untrustworthy. The Saudis are a major ally. And to make these kind of statements in public is a big red flag. They've been our ally since the 30s. In the early 70s, the United States went to Saudi Arabia and said, hey, could you sell oil only in dollars? Saudi Arabia was at the time the world's biggest exporter of oil, still one of the biggest uh, exporters of oil. And the Saudis said, sure, we'll sell oil only in dollars. You protect us. And we did. Now that seems to be changing. Now, if there is going to be a major shift, let's speculate on what a major shift would be. What would, do you think would happen to the U.S. dollar as the world reserve currency and its value if the Saudis all of a sudden said, you know, we're no longer going to trade oil only in dollars. We're going to accept yuan. We're going to accept euro. We're going to accept rubles. We're going to accept rupee. We'll take reals. We'll take pesos. We'll take just about anything. But we're no longer going to sell our oil exclusively in dollars. Well, you know, when the U.S. did that in the early 70s, the whole world followed suit. And since the early 70s, basically, by and large, you buy and sell oil only in U.S. dollars. And if the Saudis decide to change that posture and accept payment in other currencies, that's going to be a disaster for the U.S. dollar. One of my sources, Jim Willie, says that is extremely dollar negative. And here's another thing to consider. Saudi Arabia is a major buyer and holder of U.S. debt, U.S. treasuries. What happens if Saudi Arabia, being as we're talking about a quote unquote major shift in relations between the U.S. and Saudi Arabia, what would happen if they stopped buying treasuries and started selling? That too is dollar negative. And if Saudi Arabia uh, starts accepting uh, payment for its oil and other currencies, there will be a lot of countries that will no longer need to hold dollars to buy energy. And all those dollars would flood home to the United States. That would spike inflation. Now, another one of my sources said, well, you know why the Saudis are doing this. They're, they're doing this because uh, they're afraid of being overthrown. And they're doing this to, you know, to look good to the, to the public at home. Now, either way, if they're angry at the U.S., or they're afraid of being overthrown. Or another source of mine said, you know, they're puffing. Well, no matter why they're doing this, they are doing it. And it's dollar negative. And here's another thing that's dollar negative. You know, the NSA has uh, been reaching out and touching people. And now it's being reported they've been surveilling the heads of 35 countries, including the uh, newly reelected head of Germany, Angela Merkel. She is upset. She's calling the U.S. ambassador in Germany. She's calling President Barack Obama and saying, hey, I thought we were your allies. I mean, is the NSA single-handedly turning allies into enemies? This has gotten so bad, the European Parliament has cut off the United States from, the, uh, from their global financial uh, uh, data networks. Why? They don't like the spying. The U.S. is being cut off. This, too, is extremely dollar negative. Now, listen, I know it's been all over the news about how the computer system with Obamacare doesn't work. Yes, it doesn't work. Yes, that's a problem. But the bigger problem is the plan itself. You know, Nancy Pelosi, who at the time, when she said this was Speaker of the House, said we have to vote for it to see what's in it. Well, now people see what's in it, and they don't like it. 
What's been going on is that you've been hearing that uh, people's coverage is being dropped just in Florida this past week alone. 300,000 people lost their coverage. Uh, hours are being cut from full-time to part-time in preparation for the next leg of this where they don't have to insure people who work 29 hours or less. Uh, benefits are, you know, deductibles are going up. Uh, co-pays are going up. Doctors are opting, opting out. They're just saying, hey, you know what? We're not going to accept insurance that has Obamacare, affordable health care. We're not going to accept that. We're going to opt out of this. We don't have to, you know, give our medical care away for discounted prices or for free or lose money taking care of people. We don't have to do that. You know, this was supposed to be cheaper. And so far, according to reports, in, uh, what, 45 states or so, it's more expensive. And for the states where it's cheaper, well, they're depending on subsidies. And where are those subsidies going to come from? I've been saying this since the, you know, this Affordable Health Care Act was being, uh, you know, uh, uh, debated in Congress. You can't insure 40, 45 million people for free. Can't be done. Somebody's going to pay. So these subsidies... We already have a $17 trillion debt and counting. That's our annual cash debt. And now we're going to tack on subsidies. This thing's going to be, what, three triple the expense that they, they sold it to us as? So our national debt is going to explode even higher. And the drag on the economy, whew, hey, the Republicans are right when they say this is a job killer. It is. It's a job killer. This is going to be. This is going to put a drag on the economy, like tying a boat anchor on the back of a bike and trying to ride it uphill. And come 2014 in the midterm elections, I predicted that. Listen, nobody will be talking about the government shutdown. People are going to be talking about how much they're spending. It's going to be more. What they're getting is going to be less. And this was a bad deal. This was bad for the country. Bad for the economy. At the end of the day, we're not Democrats or Republicans or independents. We're Americans, and this is going to be bad for America. I will tell you one group of people that will be talking about the government shutdown, the Republicans. You know, they're going to be out saying, hey, you know, well, listen, we stuck our necks out. We took a lot of heat for trying to stop this, but we told you this was bad. And now you see how bad it is. Now, some Democrats are already trying to backpedal on this. I, I said that you know, by the middle of 2014, Democrats would be running from, not running to, or running on Obamacare. And that's already happening. I was wrong. It's already happening. There are Democratic senators saying, hey, we should put off the uh, individual mandate, at least put off the penalty. Well, you know what? The genie's out of the bottle, and you can't stick that smoke and mirrors back in the bottle. This is going to be a drag on the economy until it's repealed. That simple, until it's repealed. Next up, uh, or finally I should say, the fraud of bankers just keeps on coming. And you know what, the mainstream media really does a terrible job of, of reporting this. And they certainly don't report or really have any uh, in-depth questions and ask about the outrage. Look at this right here. This is a yet another story. Bank of America found liable in fraud, of course, in this kind of fraud, when it's concerning the bankers, nobody goes to jail. These are just civil cases. There should be outrage. I mean, the amount of crime and fraud documented, reported by bankers, I mean, mortgage fraud, securities fraud, money laundering for drug cartels and countries on the terror list, rate rigging, LIBOR rigging. I mean, you name it, they've done it. But here's how, here's how it's being reported. Here's USA Today this past week. And here's Jamie Dimon. A uh, scandal can't ding Teflon Diamond. They're trying to have this cute play on words. A cute play on words instead of doing real reporting. I mean, think about this. Jamie Dimon, his bank, J.P. Morgan Chase, has lost more than $20 billion in fines and restitutions and settlements. This year, London Whale, that sour case there was b between, you know, the losses and fines and more than $7 billion. Then they just settled with the Justice Department on how they sold mortgages, another $13 trillion, not $20 billion. And yet, there are no criminal charges whatsoever. Hey, I've got a story idea for USA Today. Listen up, you guys. This is a good one. Give it to you for free. They spend $40 billion each and every month bailing out the banks, buying their, their fraud and their toxic uh, mortgage-backed securities. $40 billion 
each and every month. They're spending a half a trillion dollars a year. Hey, do you think maybe the $40 billion a month going to the biggest banks, of which J.P. Morgan is one of them, do you think they might be paying some of this restitution and fines and these losses with the $40 billion a month they're getting each and every month? Might that be a story? But nobody asks a single question. I mean, I was listening to Fox News, you know, on Thursday night saying, well, we spent $300 million on this, uh, on this dirigible, uh, and, uh, you know, then it didn't work, and we sold it back for $300,000. We spent $40 billion a month. Which banks are getting $40 billion a month? Hey, USA Today, that'd be a good question to ponder in your newspaper. Instead of doing stupid, uh, you know, play on words that scandal can't ding the Teflon diamond, why don't you do some real reporting and find out how much money and the, the trillions of dollars these bankers have cost us by shoving their toxic junk into Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and imploding it. The mainstream media, and not just the USA Today, but the mainstream media should be ashamed they are lying by omission. That's the way I see it. Thank you for supporting USA Watchdog with your comments. Got some of the smartest people on the web coming on the, uh, the USA Watchdog site. And thank you very much for using the donations button. It helps us out. That's the way I see it. I'm Greg Hunter. Have a nice weekend.